Welcome to a brief introduction to some of the nuclear medicine processing tools available from Hermes Medical Solutions. We're going to start first by looking at DMSA processing. We have loaded here an ant and a post DMSA scan. I'm going to start by drawing the left kidney. I'm going to use a seed Roy tool for that. So you click in a hot area and just drag to the edge and this left kidney region is made uh, for you like this. The left background Roy is automatically placed. That can be redrawn if for some reason that's not uh, in the correct place. I will do the same for, for the right kidney like that. This uh, results table here is automatically calculated uh, with the results. And so that's it, finish, take a print screen and end uh, for a normal DMSA case. But for this case, we have a duplex kidney on the left hand side. So I'm going to do some further processing to find the contribution of each of the duplex uh, portions of this kidney. So the upper left kidney, I will use the freehand tool uh, just to draw that portion. So we draw the split through and then just carry on around the outside. It will be constrained to be inside the kidney region. So you don't have to be too accurate uh, when going around the outside of this. And there we go. We have the results now for each portion of that duplex left kidney. Looking now at the Renogram analysis options. So we have loaded here a dynamic uh, Renogram. I'm going to start by drawing the blood region. So I'm just going to place that there, clicking and dragging to make the region. Uh, so now we'll draw the left kidney. I'll choose a different tool for this one. This is a rubber band method. You can click at each point uh, where you want to make the, the region. Double click to finish and then these regions, background and a parenchyma region is automatically placed by the program. You can uh, change those, you can redraw them if for some reason they're not appropriate for, for this patient. Let's move on and draw the right kidney region, just like that. So now you can see there's a nice feature in this application where if the renogram acquisition was done in two parts, either because that's the design of the protocol or because the patient was unable to stay on the camera uh, for the full duration of the acquisition, it's possible uh, to plot those on the same graph. Um, and this time delay here represents the true time delay, the true time difference between the end of this acquisition and the start of this acquisition. Uh, the application can be configured to be exactly how you want it. So the layouts, the summed frames, the results that are calculated, the graphs that are displayed, they can be all customized, all configured to match exactly your, your local protocol for renograms. We also have some options for doing rutland patlack analysis for background subtraction or to take the relative function uh, from the slope. Uh, we can calculate transit times, outflow efficiencies. Uh, if you have acquired a post static that can be brought in aligned with the dynamic and then the points uh, just to the right of the renogram curve here represents the uptake in the kidneys at those points after the dynamic acquisition has finished. Looking now at the gastric emptying application, this application can take static or dynamic or both acquisitions. The regions can be drawn on any of the views and then aligned as necessary on the others. So we have anterior and posterior images for this patient. The time activity curve is displayed down here. The dotted lines are the normal ranges. These are the SNM egg white normal ranges. But if you have your own local normal range, you can plot that on here instead. For thyroid uptake calculation, we can use either an efficiency factor for the camera or images of the syringe pre and post injection to make a sensitivity factor. Looking at the application, so uh, we have here a region for the thyroid. I'm just going to use a seed Roy to so click and drag to nicely get an outline of the thyroid there. The system automatically halves that to make a left and a right lobe. Uh, 
uh, they can be redrawn if they are not right. Uh, thyroid background is automatically placed. Again, that can be redrawn or moved very easily if it's, if it's not correct. Now I will type in here the uh, full syringe activity. So let's just say that was 100. Uh, we could type in a residual if we had one here. This camera efficiency is saved in the protocol. Uh, so you'd have to measure that separately and enter that uh, for the protocol to calculate the uh, uptake here in the thyroid. For parathyroid subtraction, we can process either SPECT or planar data. We have a technetium MIBI SPECT in the left-hand panel, so that shows parathyroid and thyroid. In the middle panel, we can see an I123 SPECT, so just thyroid. And on the right-hand side, we are subtracting uh, the two acquisitions, and then we can adjust the weight slider down here to get the best result to visualize the parathyroid adenoma. For lung VQ SPECT, we can take in the images, automatically align them, and then you can triangulate through uh, the slices here. So we've got ventilation on top, perfusion on the bottom, so we can scroll and triangulate here to find uh, the defects, the mismatches. Uh, on this tab here, what we're showing, so ventilation as before on the top, uh, Q corrected, this is the perfusion specs, uh, but any remaining counts from the ventilation, if two technetium agents were used, they have been subtracted out uh, from, from this to, to correct for any possible overventing. Uh, and then this image down here is the ratio image, so it's the ventilation divided by the perfusion to really show up and highlight those uh, mismatched defects. That was a very brief overview of the nuclear medicine processing applications from Hermes Medical Solutions.